to my channel. Today I'm going to break down the international trailer for Raya and the Last Dragon. However, I will not be covering things that we have seen in previous trailers so I don't sound like a broken record. Miles follows ahead, so be warned. Okay, first new shot we have is Raya riding on the back of Tuk Tuk past some people who have been turned into stone by the Drun. After Raya reaches her destination in the tail land, she opens up a map of Kumandra. The main feature of this land is a river shaped like a dragon. The location of each tribe is labelled on the map and their name corresponds to where they are located on the Dragon River. The Fangland is near the mouth, the Heartland is near the chest, the Spineland is on the back, the Talonland is on the legs, and the Tailland is near the tail. You might also notice that there are a lot of crosses on the map. These were potential locations for the last dragon that Raya has been to. The spot she is circling in this shot is presumably where she eventually finds Sisu, on the edge of the tail land. Next there is a section where Tuk Tuk, acting like a dog, gets distracted by some sort of lizard. In a nod to Frozen 2, he jumps off the hill in the same way as Bruni did. We then get a realistic aerial shot of Kumandra. This shot clearly shows us that the Fang and Heartlands are considerably more prosperous, filled with lush green areas. In contrast, the Spine, Talon and Tail Land are covered in barren dry areas. Another important thing to note is that the Heartland is on an island in the middle of a river, isolated from the other tribes. When Raya was a child, Chief Benja built a bridge to join the Heart to the other lands to create unity. Next, Chief Benja's voiceover gives us an info dump about the state of Kumandra. I presume that this dialogue is part of the film's prologue. He explains that each land is named after a part of the dragon, and we see a shot of Sisu swimming underneath a boat, which I presume is the Shrimporium. We then get a shot of each of the different tribes. First up is the Fangland featuring its leader Virina holding a cat surrounded by her army. However, the most interesting part of this shot is that it is in 2D animation. We found out from Twitter that the press who saw the screeners loved the animation in the prologue and now we understand why. A lot of people really want 2D animation back so I think they'll be happy with this stylistic choice. Back to 3D animation, representing the Heartland is a man painting a henna-like symbol on what looks to be a tablecloth. This symbol has a similar colouring and design to this other symbol, which has been found on some of the merch. It appears to be symbolising a united Kamandra, featuring the logo of each of the five tribes. The Spineland image features a group of people in a village type setting in the same place where Raya and Namari have their showdown. The baby seems to be a focal point of this shot, facing towards the audience and making a sound. This could be an important character, maybe with some connection to Tong. I just thought I would quickly mention here that Tong is the last remaining person in the spine, the rest having left to seek a better life. The Tailland depicts a family waving goodbye to someone on a boat port. This is the same port that Raya escapes Namari on. I thought this could potentially be Boone's family. We know that Boone lost his family to the drum, but this could be a flashback. Finally, we have an image of the leader of the Talonland holding his dragon gem, giving off a very cheeky vibe. Now I know that there is a bit of confusion about this character, so here's a quick explanation. When they announced the voice cast for this movie, Lucille Sung was announced as the leader of the Talon tribe. This obviously doesn't work because she is not a male. I have discovered, however, that she is actually playing his mother. She is probably royal by marriage, not blood, so that is why she isn't ruling the tribe. Next, we get two shots of the Talon markets, which are filled with delicious food and gorgeous lanterns. In this shot, you can see Hei Hei from Awana making a little cameo. He has a ball on his head, which is very in character. We then get some Heartland Palace food shots. We see a bowl of soup and some sort of egg-like food which baby Tuk Tuk is eating. If you are Southeast Asian, please let me know what these foods are in the comments down below. I would really appreciate it. And the final shot of this section is another look at the Talon Market, with a lady walking past carrying a lantern. We then get a sequence of the Drun's return when Raya was a child. The ground gives way, and we see the citizens of Kumandra, including young Raya and Chief Benja, looking up in horror. We then get our first really good look at the Drun. It is a black smoke with a purple light. Next we see people running away from it, and one man who cannot run fast enough is consumed. Following this, we see the moment that Chief Benja turns to stone. He is unable to run as his leg is hurt, and he throws young Raya off the bridge into the river to save her. We then get two more shots from the 2D animated prologue. The first is of the leader of the tail land on top of a bull-like creature. This land doesn't seem quite as dead compared to later shots as it still has some greenery. We then see the leader of the spine land looking equally as aggressive with a large army backing him up. 
Next we see part of the Fang Palace fall to the ground. We know that this is the location of a massive final act conflict and the drum is obviously completely destroying the area. Then there is a shot of Rai riding on Tuk Tuk past some stone people. All these people are in the same prayer like pose. It must happen automatically after they are transformed to stone. The next piece of new footage is Araya doing some sort of rope maze. I believe that this occurs while she is searching for the Tailland gem after she has found Sisu. This is because later in the trailer we see an image of Sisu with similar ropes in the background. We then get a repeat of Raya doing a ritual to summon Sisu, but this time we get to see Tuk Tuk's reaction and it is predictably adorable. We also see some different dialogue from Sisu saying hello in a very confused way. She has been asleep for 500 years so she has every right to be a little out of it. Then Raya is seen sprawled out on the floor having been knocked out by Sisu. Sisu then helps to straighten her out in a cute bonding moment. The next new image is of the fully formed dragon gem in the chamber. The voiceover then says that the gem contains the last of dragon magic. You see, when the Drun attacked 500 years ago, all of Sisu's siblings put their magic into the gem. Sisu can then use this magic once she acquires the relevant piece. We then see some sort of conflict between Raya and Sisu. Raya looks frustrated and Sisu wearing a hat and cape in a pathetic attempt to disguise herself looks very sad. Based on what we know about these characters, I think Raya is a focused realist very serious about completing her task. On the other hand, Sisu has a more positive, carefree attitude that may not exactly gel with Raya. In this scene, Sisu probably made an unhelpful suggestion or was just wasting time. After this, we see many stone dragons. It is pretty sad that all of these beautiful creatures are now gone. We then get an image of Tong described as an assassin, which is a pretty intense description because I thought he was just a warrior. There must be some dodgy stuff going on in the spine land. They do have that whole xenophobia issue there. There is next a shot of Boon doing a fun whoosh thing with his hands. Noi and her omnis seem to be enjoying it, but Tok Tok just looks confused. After this, we see Tong throwing his axe against a wall. As Tong is the lone remaining citizen of Spine, his axe these days is mainly used for cutting vegetables. You might also notice Raya in the corner tied up. The next new piece of footage is a scene of Raya, Boon and Sisu on the Shrimporium, releasing a flower into the river. This flower is very similar to the one Raya places in Chief Benja's hand. I think that this flower might be a remembrance symbol for victims of the Drun, similar to how poppies are used for Anzac Day. Later, there is a scene of Raya looking all sad on the boat, probably from the same scene. Her face looks slightly different on this angle. I don't know why, maybe it's just me. Next new shot is a close-up of Sisu looking gorgeous, and if you look closely, I think you can see Namari in the reflection of her eyes. I have a theory about this scene, but it is a massive spoiler, so leave now if you don't want to hear it. Okay, so book images have revealed that at some point Namari meets Raya to give her the fang piece of the dragon gem. During this exchange, Sisu and Namari lock eyes, which is probably this shot. Okay, spoilers over. Here is a beautiful shot of the Shrimporium traveling through the Dragon River. This has to be near the heart of fang lands that have more greenery. Sisu then says, my girl Raya and I are going to fix the world. I love how Sisu has so much faith in Raya, it is so great to see a supportive female friendship. The next new thing we get is an extended sequence of Raya and Namari's fight in the Fangland. We get some close-ups and Raya even does a flip. Later, Raya is seen sliding down a wall along with Tong holding Noi. I think that this is during the Fangland sequence, but I'm not 100% sure. There is also this scene I really like with all the squad sharing a meal together on the boat. This moment has also been captured on a recent poster for the film. Considering food is a visual metaphor for trust in the film, I think that this will be a very touching scene. A cute father-daughter moment between Tong and Noi is also included. We then see Tong, Boon, Tuk Tuk Noi and the Omnis running up behind Raya. It looks like the spy land, but it is not entirely clear. This trailer has the same ending scene as the previous one with just a slightly different Tuk Tuk reaction. One thing I want to quickly mention here that I didn't notice before is that this scene takes place near the tree that Raya and Sisu have been seen earlier swinging to. This tells us that the Taoland gem has the magic that allows Sisu to shape change. Anyway, that is all for this breakdown. Like this video if you liked it and please subscribe. It would mean so much to me. Bye now and have a magical day.